Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here in beautiful Cape Breton Island in the Highlands. We are still at our tiny house but today we're out exploring. Yes we are in Cape Breton National Park. There's so much to do here. It's also incredibly hot. I think it's almost 35 degrees today. We're at the very very tail end of a heat wave. It feels like Dominican Republic here so we came out to explore get near some water. There's so many great like hikes and waterfalls up here but we were literally just driving and saw this beautiful brook. It's actually called Halfway Brook. I wonder why. But look at it. It's so pretty. All these beautiful boulders. It's places like this that make us fall in love with Cape Breton. We try to get here every time we're home because every place we visit is pure magic from mountains to rivers to beaches and then we just find this this river with all these white rocks now if you happen to be new around here i'm trevor and that's anna hit the subscribe button to follow along on our adventures heck leave us a comment if you're not new it's great to see all you guys every time so i'm pretty sure we picked up a lot of you in recent weeks probably because you were looking up either halifax or stuff about nova scotia we're actually from here in case you didn't know that we've lived here basically our entire lives but we do travel a lot you go back in the channel you're going to find videos from all sorts of other countries but you're also going to find videos from here in Nova Scotia and in Cape Breton from the last couple of summers and then coming up soon there'll be some more travel content. I just had to come down and touch the water to see if it's cold. I'll let you guys guess. It's not cold actually just in case you thought it would be. I thought it would be but it's a really hot day today. Now you guys probably know that Canada is known for its national parks but we can tell you with certainty that the Cape Breton Highlands National Park is one of the best it's kind of funny because now it's really, really busy and we're like well into August as we film this. But last month when we were here, we met a lot of people visiting this place for the first time and they couldn't get over how quiet it is. So just remember that. Maybe you come in July if you don't want any people at all. You guys always ask us while we're traveling, do we miss our home? Do we miss Canada? Maybe more specifically, do we miss Nova Scotia? And to be completely honest, like while we're on the road, we don't think about it too much. Of course we think about our family. We miss everyone of our friends but it, when we get back here in the summer and it, we're at a place like this we realize how special it is and yeah we miss it <laughs> and obviously we always try to get back here in the summertime it's not so great at least for us in the winter time fall's pretty great <laughs> spring eh. but summer is pretty much perfect today though as we already said it's like almost 35 degrees i'm gonna guess that this is probably gonna break some records it's oh, never this ever this hot and i think our love of this place also kind of goes around the weather so on days like today we're like oh this is perfect i love it here so much yeah. tomorrow and the next day it's supposed to be kind of rainy and drizzly and like 20 degrees and we'll probably be like what why why are we here i know so yeah we just hope it's gonna be like this every single day <laughs> uh why are you putting your shoes in the water because these are actually Vessi shoes. They are waterproof. And we want to say a huge thank you to Vessi for sponsoring this week's video. So have you guys heard of the brand Vessi? It's actually a true game changer for us. We've been searching for the perfect sneaker for years and years. One of my favorite things about these sneakers is they're actually waterproof. I mean, look at this. I'm completely standing in water. Like I'm submerged at the moment. But here's what we like about them even more. They're not just made for when you're out hiking and rivers and things like that. I can't even say how many times we got stuck in huge downpours and our feet would get soaked. That's not going to happen with these, even if it's a little bit of light rain that's not going to happen with these. This kind of messes with your mind a little bit. It's going to take some getting used to just because I feel like my foot should be getting wet and it's not even slightly. So check this out. I actually just took my foot out of the sneaker and my socks are completely 100% dry. These sneakers are so comfortable. They feel like they're almost like a sock-like material, but they're actually made from Dymatex, a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in summer and warm in colder weather. It doesn't feel like it should be waterproof at all. So these sneakers actually hit a whole bunch of great points for us. One is that they're just super comfortable. We can wear them on days like today on hikes, but you can also wear them through cities and on travel days. Just wear them for ages and your feet are not going to get sore. They're lightweight and they also are really, really packable. You can fold them down basically and pack them in your suitcase, which is perfect 
for us. You would think a sneaker that checks all those boxes wouldn't look as good as they do. We absolutely love them. Anna went for the weekend sneakers. She also got the everyday move slip-ons and I went for the everyday classics. Fessy is our go-to sneakers at the front door and of course in our suitcase. Now we're gonna put a link on the screen here and down below so you can get your own Vessies. We wanna say a huge thank you to Vessie for sponsoring this video and supporting creators like us. We just came over to Neal's Harbor and we thought we would try out the beach here. It is beautiful as you can see and what's funny about this is last year when we were in the Cape Breton Highlands here we decided to kind of stop in Neal's Harbor I think to go to the grocery store and we saw this beach on our way and we were like we have to come visit. Yes yeah, so and on a day like today when it's over 30 degrees what is better to do than go to the beach? Of course it's super windy here though so it, it doesn't very even feel that hot. <laughs> if any of you are new around here and you're not familiar with Nova Scotia you might be shocked at the beaches we have here. I mean, this one's absolutely beautiful. It's the first time we came here, but we've explored some other beaches in this province as well. We'll make sure to link to some here. Some of the beaches are just out of this world, world-class beaches, except most times the water is it's pretty cold. All right, you have to be honest. How is it? It's pretty cold. So it's not the coldest water you're gonna find in Nova Scotia. I've definitely been in way colder than this, but I've definitely been in warmer too. It's the type of thing that's a little bit shocking when you first put your legs in, but I think after a couple minutes, you might adjust to it. So a little piece of advice, if you're just coming to Nova Scotia for the first time and wanting to visit some beaches and maybe not experience super cold water, we find on the west coast of Cape Breton and also on the north shore of the mainland has the warmest water by a lot. It's funny, before we got here, I totally thought the first thing I would do was go in the water. Just given how hot it is today, I've just been sweating all day. But once we got here, like it's so windy that it's keeping me very, very cool and refreshed. And now I got my drink to cool me down as well. So we're going to finish up here, sit back, relax, get a little bit of sun, then head back to our tiny house, which is where you're going to see us next. Well, it's now the next day and the weather has drastically changed. As you can probably tell, it is pouring outside. And not only that, it is 15 degrees Celsius today. We're filming this in August. Yesterday was 35 degrees Celsius. That's 20 degrees difference. That's the drop. Over it. I can't <laughs> get over the fact that yesterday we were sweating and so hot and today I'm under a blanket. It's cold. <laughs> so our original plan was to keep going to places on Cape Breton Island here, but that's not going to happen today. So we thought we'd sit down and tell you guys a little bit about our favorite places or let's think of it as the best of Cape Breton. Some of our favorite things to do here. Yeah, the funny thing is, is that we make these all these videos of different places around the world and then people always send us messages and say, can you give us your recommendations for Halifax, for Cape Breton, for Turks and Caicos? And the answer is usually, well, just watch our videos. <laughs> yeah. Why we make them. But I know with Cape Breton we have a whole bunch of different videos but they're kind of like spread out. Some of them were during lockdowns yep. and so we figured we kind of put together a list to help you out and plan maybe your time here in Cape Breton. So we're gonna start off with some things to do first and we're going to point out that the beaches here in Cape Breton are just out of this world. Now if you're not from Canada or Nova Scotia you might be surprised to hear that but we can tell you with certainty we have some world-class beaches if you can uh, withstand the cold water sometimes. <laughs> sometimes the water's not too cold though. Like we went swimming actually here at mm -hmm. Blue Bayou, which is where our uh, tiny house is. And the water's actually really warm and it's salt water. So yeah. it's kind of an inlet and I think that's why. But and also the water on the west coast of Cape Breton is really, really quite, quite warm. It's quite, it's quite warm. And I think the trick is, and this makes sense, is the summer goes on, the water warms up. So mm -hmm. if you're coming in August, that's when it's tolerable. Yeah. <laughs> if you hook a great day in September, it's golden. Yeah, but if you hook a really hot day in June, it's mm. probably gonna be pretty cold. <laughs> like numbingly cold. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because visually the beaches are just epic. Now, another thing that we love in the Cape Breton Highlands is the gypsum mines just outside of Shetty Camp on the west coast. I guess it's, that would be the highlands, but it's more like outside the highlands, right? Yeah, it's not quite the, the Cabot Trail. highlands, but it's oh, on the Cabot Trail. Yeah. Uh, so I'll count that because it's all sure. Cabot Trail things. It's on the things. edge of the highlands, I guess. <laughs> but it's just so <laughs> unique. It's a quick walk uh, into the gypsum mines. I think it's about 20, 20 minutes yeah. Yeah, based off memory. Yeah. But so cool, right? Yeah, so beautiful. The day that we went, we just happened to almost have it to ourselves. I think in the summertime, it's quite a bit busier, but I think you can swim there as well. Mm -hmm. Now we know another one is 
trails. Now we are guilty a little bit. We haven't done a lot of the trails in and around the Cape Breton Highlands and the Cabot Trail, but there's a lot of walking trails, like so many walking trails. Some people come to this island just to do that alone. Yeah, we're not huge hikers, and if we do, we want it to be kind of short and not, mm -hmm. not too <laughs> difficult, but there's like every level of hiking here on yeah. the island. It's probably why we like the gypsum mines, because it's in, you get to see something unique, yeah. and then you're back pretty quick. Yeah. So another one is sunsets. On the west side of Cape Breton, you get the best sunsets. They are oh. so great, especially like Shetty Camp and Inverness. Yeah. Oh, it's just perfect. So if any of you are familiar with the map, you'll know Nova Scotia and Cape Breton, of course, is on the east coast. So you might think we don't get those sunsets that the west coast of the country gets out in, say, BC or Vancouver. But we do, like, especially when you're on the west side of Cape Breton. You can't see land, so it's just the ocean and the sunsets are just immaculate like it's one of my favorite places to be in the summer to catch the sun yeah and last one thing that we actually haven't done here in cape breton but we've done in uh another part of nova scotia is whale watching mm -hmm. it's, there's lots of whale watching around here yep. uh, so it's a great thing to go do i think you can go in like zodiacs and then yeah it's really popular and it's definitely mm -hmm. unique to the province it's not every province you can go whale watching and you're almost guaranteed to see a whale of some kind every time and I think some places even if you don't see a whale they'll give you kind of a free pass to come back not every place don't hold me to that but I know it used to be a thing that, that happened to me when I was a kid ah yeah. so hopefully it still is if you're coming to watch the whales so our next category one of our favorite things is where to eat what are the mm. best restaurants of course there are loads and loads of restaurants here on Cape Breton Island so this is not an all-encompassing list but these are some of our favorites <laughs> starting with our ultimate favorite which is La Brie yeah I don't think we've ever filmed this place which is crazy I I know, I'm not sure why we didn't. Now that I'm thinking on the spot here, we may have snuck it in a video quickly. We are at dinner at La Brie in Shetty Camp. It's supposed to be one of the top rated restaurants in Cape Breton. And we got an awesome table, and look at that. Yeah, that's the view. Oh, that western sunset in Cape Breton. We can tell you this, the food is out of this world, and I think it might even be our favorite restaurant in the entire province of Nova Scotia. It's up there for sure. It's one of, yeah, that's, that's a big thing it's to say. Statement. That's a bold statement. But it's so good. Every time we've gone, uh, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. The setting couldn't be better. Yeah. It's going back to the sunsets. It's right in Shetty Camp. You have a beautiful, beautiful sunset. So definitely go for sunset time if you can. Yeah. Now the next one, I know we have not put in a video, but it's in my hometown where I grew up in North Sydney and Cape Breton. Uh, it's about two hours from where we are right now in the Highlands, but there is a restaurant called The Black Spoon and it is just a gem of a place. We seriously really can't get over it. Uh, they're open for lunch and for dinner. I don't know what days of the week. I think they close a couple of days, but oh, it's so good and they have the best paninis and sandwiches. Yeah, and soup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so especially lunch stuff. Uh, we'll have to go for dinner at some point, but if you're making your way to maybe Newfoundland to catch the Newfoundland ferry, you could stop it's at the It's a Black definite must watch. Stop, yeah, especially if you're doing the ferry. Sure. Yeah, now another place that's on uh, the way when we're driving here uh, to the Highlands is the Clucking Hen, which is such a great stop as well. They're uh, half like kind of like a bakery, you can get coffees and, and baked goods, but they also have some just amazing food as well. Yeah, if we, as we go through those, you're gonna find there's a lot of great sandwich places. We are, yes. we're big sandwich fans, we yeah. that <laughs> lunch fan. Clucking Hen's a great lunch spot. I think they're open for dinner too, but we've never yeah. actually done that. But they've got a really good range of foods, something for everybody, I think. Yeah, now as you make your way further north uh, in Cape Breton here, and you get to Inganish, which is just at the entrance into the Cape Breton Highlands, there is uh, a place called the Celtic Lodge, and it's it's a hotel, but there's also a famous hotel, a I very say. famous yeah. hotel. It is incredibly epic, on a cliff, mm -hmm. right by the ocean, with some absolutely delicious food. Yeah, I'd say this is more of the upscale thing. If you're looking for something really special, an anniversary or birthday yeah. or a family get together or something you want to celebrate, this is the perfect spot to do it. It's like a white tablecloth type place. Yeah, and last but not least, we have to uh, say, and again, it goes back to kind of a lunchy bakery, but we just love those places, is the Dancing Goat. Which and that's is, in Marguerite? Is yeah, it? it's around Marguerite. It's in between, depending which way, if you're driving across um, the, the Cabot Trail, like you want to get to the west coast, you're know, heading towards, say, Inverness. Ness. It's kind of right in the middle around mm -hmm. Marguerite and oh what a place that is. It's always busy. They have some great coffee, lattes, mm -hmm. cappuccinos and sandwiches. And, sa <laughs> and sandwiches. They have some amazing sandwiches. They have some breakfast items as well. Mm -hmm. so there is of course many many other 
awesome restaurants around. But those are just maybe five of our favorites. And if you're coming here, make sure to try to hit them up. All right, so you're coming to Cape Breton. We've already gone over some things that you should do and some places you should eat. But where are you going to stay? Well, what else are we going to say then? Our tiny host, if you're wondering more, you want to see more about it, the last video we went through, did a little tour, and then there's an older video from last year when we first set it up that we went through a very, very, very detailed tour. We, we of course, have to shamelessly <laughs> plug our place in case you want to come and rent it, you can, but if our tiny house is not your jam, we are staying here on Blue Bio Resort. Our tiny house is on Blue Bio Resort, and there happens to be other accommodations here. There's something like the Boogie Shack, there's a few different cabins, but also they have epic domes. There's a lot of these. Yeah, those ge geodesic domes, you've probably seen them before. They're so much fun to mm. stay in. It's probably the most fun, unique place you could ever stay. Yeah, now we did stay in one of those domes, I think a year or so ago, and we'll make sure to link it on the screen so you guys can check it out. But there's been some updates to these domes that are kind of happening, which are gonna make things a little more cozy, and we're going to take you down and show you what's happening in the domes. So we've just come down to dome number one. I think last time we stayed in number three, is that right? Yeah, yeah we did. Number three up there. <laughs> we're gonna check out number one. It's closest to the water. There have been some updates since we were last year, two years ago, and you guys I remember Stefan, he's the owner here at Blue Bayou. Mm. How you doing? We Continue. hear there's some upgrades <laughs> happening. Yes, yes, yes. We're gonna start, I guess, with yeah. uh, the new doors. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 36 inch doors, so uh, wheelchair accessible. Oh, the other ones weren't wheelchair accessible, so. It makes the place a little roomier. <laughs> For sure. And we got new floors, like I think you guys had the new floors last time you came. Yeah. We upgraded the bathrooms. Yeah, we uh, added a uh, nice uh, ceramic floors in all our bathrooms. Makes it much cleaner and much nicer. Easier to clean also. Nice, you can see the uh, vanity of course right here. Yeah. That's great. And each dome is gonna have a pellet stove. Uh, this one is not plugged in or anything like that. We just put it in just to make it look. We have all of them. We're gonna be installing them when it's busy season. Uh, slows down a little bit, giving us time to go in every dome and uh, put the pellet stove in. Yeah, it's going to be awesome in like, yeah. September and October yeah. when it gets chilly here, but it's like a perfect time to come because the leaves start to change and it's, it's going to be super cozy. <laughs> super cozy, yeah. for sure. So as we said, this is dome number one and it has the best view on the property. We're right here on the water. There are also kayaks and everything to take out there, but there's also a King size bed here, super cozy. Yeah, this has been, I remember this bed last year. It was very cozy, but what the camera doesn't do a great job of is picking up like high, how high the ceilings are, huh? It is. I mean, we're in a dome. It's really, really neat. And then it's like, uh, well, not glass, but you can see through the top. So at nighttime, you can see the stars. Well, we hope you guys learned a little bit about Cape Breton today, at least what our favorite things are. Maybe you're going to come here and figure out what your favorite things are. We sure hope you do, because we just love the island. Yeah, but also if you're watching this and you have some great suggestions of things you love to do that we didn't talk about or places to eat, <laughs> leave them in the comments below to help people out. I can't believe that this is our final day, for this year anyway, yeah. at the tiny house. Know, How did time go so quickly? Summer flies by. <laughs> I know. So we're, we're going back to Halifax basically tomorrow. So you'll see us there in the next video. I'm sure we will get up to uh, some no good, shall I say? <laughs> no, we'll have a blast when we get back to the city. If you got this far, it's Trevor and the Delightful Travelers. We appreciate all of you watching, everyone that's new and all the regular viewers. It means the world to us. All right, guys, that's it. From Cape Breton at our tiny house, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.